I'm going to go move to my other computer. <laughs> okay. I'll pick this up in a minute. Aha. Uh -huh. Howdy, folks. Hey, I'm A. Your face. Nice glow. You got a light bulb under you? Uh, I got one here. That's great. It's a good idea. Is it LED? <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, okay, well, you got to watch me walk down the Yeah, stairs. we're walking with you. What you do on Zoom. Uh, all right. So, Lori, are you teaching from home? Are you going to be doing that, or what's happening? So, um, you retire. So we <laughs> we um, started August twelfth with uh, we went in we went in um, in person the first day, and then we've been doing online training. Wait, I think I did that wrong. Ever since, and um, just the other day. Friday evening, my principal asked me to teach science in addition to math. And I love to teach science, but I wasn't expecting it. So uh, yeah, my, my head is spinning. What so our, we're being recorded. Okay, so we'll have to keep our conversation. Civil, yes. Is that just, just so that we, for notes? We don't- I um, think so. I... Okay. <laughs> we're required to either record the meeting and push it up to the website or for you to publish a transcript within that we put on the website within 24 hours a tr transcript or or minutes because i was it, just about to it can minutes. look like your minutes but it has to be a transcript of the discussion so most people choose to have the recording yeah recording yeah. sounds fun <laughs> well i i noticed that casey is a, a picture of the connecticut river so yeah. yeah. Casey's Do got really bad people light. See running pure. <laughs> <laughs> do we do we want to, do I need minutes as well or do we just go you with the recording? You could transcribe them from your recording if you wanted to do it that way cuz what'll happen is is we record to the cloud and then we post it on the website so people can go back and um listen to it. Ooh, yeah. That means you could listen to it and do your minutes up. I just take some some uh, undetailed notes, Lori, and publish yeah. and, and, you know, send them out. Yeah. Just for, I take be... notes and I take notes for myself. <laughs> just for, just for our own, you know, yeah. memory. I'm not going to, I'm not yeah. going to listen to the transcript. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> okay. Not, that's not enough. enough. <laughs> right. All, all right. right. So we have to stop all this mumbo jumbo. So if there's only three of us, um, are we just having a discussion as opposed to a formal meeting? Or? I think Steve's coming on, or at Steve least one. was coming. Any? Do you hear from anybody else, David? No. <laughs> we need. We need one more. We need Steve. I think. Hey, I'm so here. Far, like, um, Our, where's your? Where's the your other Steve? Oh, there we, we go. Now, there. We have, now we have a quorum. Yep. Yep. <laughs> So we should introduce ourselves for the record here. I'm David Gilbert Keith, chair of the Deerfield Energy Committee. It's August 27th, and uh, we're trying to meet. I'm Laurie Jusada. I'm Steven Swoboda. M.A. Sweetland. Uh, this is kind of an, I mean, a, just a catching up meeting. Uh, I don't really have a grand plan for things. Um, I noticed, M.A., you had some thoughts about the aggregation numbers that we got, where we showed up at 14.4% opt-out. We were, we were better than most. We were better than most. I did notice that. Um, did people, and I sent that out so everybody saw it. Um, my only thought was uh, that um, after, at, well, I don't know what the price, you know, the raise and the right raising the price will mean to my idea, but I was thinking of it in September, October 
um, doing another sort of educational thing about the 50% percent. I also don't know when the December numbers come out. Yeah. So, um, you know, just trying to get, trying to convince people that uh, it's, it's good for all sorts of good reasons that if they sign up for the better stuff. Yeah. What, I mean, what do you mean by the December numbers? Is that the price adjustments? Yeah. Oh, no, no, I mean, I didn't mean that. The price, uh, the, the timing is uh, awkward because what's going to happen, uh, what I was talking about is Eversource's numbers because mm -hmm. the 50% the is going to look a lot better when the Eversource numbers come out. By numbers, you mean prices? Yeah, they're, when they, they're, they're winter prices. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So I, um, I think in general, the, um, I mean, just talking with a, a friend, first of all, um, I thought it was strange, but as far as education, so she was annoyed about the process that you had to opt out instead of opting in. And I tried to explain that, gosh, I'm sorry, I don't know what just happened. Okay, I get what it, um, I'm sorry, I'm having a little hard time with the notes thing, but I guess I'll catch up with that afterwards. Um, she was having a hard time with the idea that you had to opt out. And I tried to assure her that the energy committee was working with a bunch of other towns and with a um, agent and that we wouldn't be doing the aggregation if it gave us a higher price. And that, you know, we knew we wouldn't be successful getting enough people if it was she, she said most people didn't, you know, didn't read their stuff. And I said, well, that's exactly why it had to be a, an opt out because you had to really have some interest in the outcome if you, um, you know, the, in order to take action. And so not taking action would give us enough people <laughs> to actually have, you know, the quantity we need to make it work. Um, mm. So anyway, I, I mean, Am I correct in saying that the group that was meeting with, um, is it uh, Colonial? Yeah. That, that we, would, we would keep adjusting whatever's going on if it turned out that the aggregation was not in our favor. If this, um, I don't know how you pronounce it, Dynagy, if that was not in our favor to be uh, working with them. Is that correct? That we, know, have, we, we have a three-year contract that we have to stick by. They gave us a price and we will stick with that contract. Um, the, everybody, with the, uh, the idea is, well, two things. One is that the opt-out is a state law. And if you happen to oh. notice, Eversource is also an opt-out. Oh, okay. That's but interesting it, to know. I mean, we, ev did you ever have a choice? I mean, before you had to opt out of Eversource. The everybody gets Eversource, right? That's unless unless they opt out, and and so the opt out option it's written into state law when they when when they set up the whole uh, when they whatever that was called that deregulation. They, yeah, that. For, that um, so when they when they did the deregulation law, that's that's how it was written. It was it isn't a choice. Nobody gets to choose, and it's 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 so easy to opt out. It's right. It's right. I mean, it's like why are you whining? But I never said that part. Yeah, <laughs> you're being recorded. <laughs> um, I I agree. I I um, but I didn't know that about the state law part. So that that yeah, makes sense. Yeah, and and that's the way. I mean, you know. Anyhow, um, Eversource does not make any money off of, off of the agreement. So it, they, any cost they have, they, it's a straight pass through to us on their, on their supply side. Uh, they make all their money on the distribution side and the delivery side. Hmm. So, you know, whoever you have as your aggregator or your supplier, um, and we we got a great deal. I mean, we the price of, of uh, fuel was so low when our when our um, contract came in 
that we, I mean, it's almost guaranteed that, that we will be 10% less on the, over the history of the three years. I mean, that's what Dynergy was saying. And they're not going to say that unless they know what's really, you know, very yeah. likely, probably more. I'm sure they were very conservative about that. Yeah. So um, it's a good deal. And so, so and there so was a lot of, there was a, ton, there was a ton of misinformation going around, which is what yeah. happens, you know. Right. Well, and I, I think my, conf my um, what's not confusion, but my um, conundrum is how do you get information out to people, <laughs> right? I mean, you, I you did the thing on Deerfield Now um, and, um, you know, you did the robocall and we, we, it was on the website. So, and right. people got an actual piece of mail. So, right. We, but we as a town did better than, you know, most of the towns. At fourteen, at forty percent opt out, and we're so one of the biggest I'm, towns too. So what um, I was reading, um, what Nat Fortune had written, yeah. Um, who who is it that would announce something about the price fluctuations? Because I think that's too confusing for the average person. I think that would just boggle everybody's mind. The price fluctuations. <laughs> I'm not. Con I'm not sure what you're talking about. What you were talking about, how December in December, you know, we, uh, we put out a certain um, schedule ours, of prices. Ours doesn't fluctuate. Eversource changes their, goes out to bid every six months. Right. So I'm not sure what, what um, I could try and bring up um, Nat's, I don't know if we, if we have to look at, did you get to read what Nat wrote um, in response to what get, Casey I said? Remember. Okay. I, so he was asking about, I don't know. I don't about whether or not somebody would would be putting out um, an announcement to our community, and he was concerned that his phone would be ringing off the hook with questions yeah, about I, it. Yeah, I read that. So what what he was talking about? Well, Colonial's going to send out a letter because they're required by DPU to uh, announce that the state is going to raise the prices for everybody. That'll they're, they're, it's going to go up for every source. It's going to go up for everybody. It's not, it's going to go up a tiny amount, you know, like maybe 60 cents a month or something, or not even. Yeah, but people don't read the amount, they I, read I understand. <laughs> I, <laughs> they're reading I, I, I understand. I told you so. But it's going to go up for everybody, including Eversource. So, and the so and Colonial what is Matt, required what to was saying he wanted it after the Eversource prices came out so that people could could, could see ever sources went up a whole lot also. So is he but ours actually, doesn't look so bad. Uh, he was Here's actually um, who who is that that because it's uh, somebody uh, it's else's probably iPad. Steve trying to get in. Ha ha oh hi Steve. Steve Viper. Hey Steve. Hello. Hey, Steve. Where Hello. where are you uh um, hey, coming in? Oh, we don't have to do that. Okay. Um <laughs> so yeah, we're being recorded, so we'll keep the chit chat to a minimum. Um, <laughs> um, let me, let me have it. We've got to have Steve introduce himself here. Oh. Hello, I'm Steve Iper. To whom am I introducing myself? Uh, <laughs> the town. I, we're being recorded. This goes late. up on I'm, the website. I'm down in the Cape, and we don't have. Um, yeah. Okay. I don't have a good uh, Wi-Fi connection here, so I'm, I'm maybe in and out, but that's why. Could, sorry to be so you late. You could always call in <laughs> if it gets really bad. Yeah, so, M.A., um, do we have any, um, any say with whether or not when Colonia will issue that letter to everybody? Or that, That's what Nat was talking about. He was suggesting to them, because that was a conversation with Denise Allard, who's from Colonial. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so that, so... Um, he was suggesting that it come that the letter go out after. I think Casey. I don't remember David or Casey. Do you remember what what the deadline was? I think it was the end. It was. I, don't. I think it was the end of December, December, wasn't it? Was it the end of September? I mean, I, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Was it the end of September, I mean? No, it was. 
Or it was, was it, much, later it was much later. I can't remember when it was. I could look it up, but it was it was within the it, it was within the range of being able to wait until Eversource's prices winter prices came out. Which means it's later. Uh, let me search my email. Do we have a name for our group for our um, aggregation? You know, yeah. <laughs> um, you mean Deerfields or the all the whole? No, the whole. I mean, I don't think people also from that letter. I don't think it. Maybe it was written there. I'm not sure. I don't remember off the top of my head, and I don't know where I filed it. Um, how many communities are involved? But anyway, um, I do think it would be. There are what 13, 14 communities. Yeah. It, One is Huntington, the 11, 12 and 12 in Franklin County, including us and one in Huntington. So I think it's 13. Yeah, I think so. It's something like that. So um, as far as the education goes, um, do we want to think about, I don't know, making a little video for um, what's our TV channel for FCAT or something like that? I don't know. I mean, I think it would be interesting to share the background. Like most people don't realize that um, towns getting together isn't even even a possibility. And then a little bit about how much. Um, well, I think we could put a letter in the recorder. We could do we could we could do a article in the recorder and yeah and okay have that reprinted on Deerfield now, and even do. Uh, and then, and then I know Sunderland did a, a question and answer video on FCAT, oh. uh, which was same would be re would be relevant for us too. And we could do we could do we could do all of those things uh, once we decided we wanted to and had some idea of the numbers mm. and why why it would be a good idea. But right now, um, if the numbers end up looking, if I mean I can't imagine they will. Eversource always goes up in the winter, so the uh, our numbers are going to look much better once the winter numbers come out for Eversource. Could we um, make a, a link to the Sunderland um, video on our web page? Would that be consent? make sense? Well, not yet, not yet, but yes. No, no, I know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's all sorts of things. I mean, those are the three things I know that you can do uh, that are slightly effective. But then again, the conversation on Deerfield now is so uncontrollable that um, you don't know whether it'll be a positive or a negative. Well, yeah. and I, the tricky thing is that you don't know who is responding. Like, um, so we need a energy committee spokesperson who is gonna um, kind of give the scoop about wh why where this came from and what the background is and yeah you know the mo what the power of um you know a big uh, aggregate going for 50 percent um renewables and yeah well not everybody <laughs> not everybody has no i know but as a, as a phase two um, yeah. you know so phase one help people understand the purpose of that Stephen. And um, <laughs> and then phase two would be to increase, you know, and I don't know, maybe that's next spring or something like that. We look at some educational piece about, I don't know if um, even Colonial would put together some, what that looks like. They have to approve anything we send out anyhow. So. Oh, do they have any um, DPU educational? D DPU requires them to, to do that. No, they, I don't think they'll do it for, uh, I mean, I don't know, I, I, don't, I just don't think the job's that hard to put something. No, I'm just talking about some um, general information about, you know, the effects of, you know, using solar and wind versus continuing to support whatever coal or natural gas plants are around here. I mean, I don't even know exactly where we're getting our the other 50 percent that I'm that is not renewable well, but the, th the thing is is that what the electrons that come into our house are uncontrollable what we're what what this all does is just buy wrecks and s wrecks and things like that right yeah but I'm but I'm talking about broad brush strokes um yeah the investment in renewables and right. just like any other investment if you have more demand it's going to be less expensive so 
Yeah. How about that for Economics 101? <laughs> Um, yeah, so I'm not, I, I also hesitate about putting something in, maybe putting a link to something in um, Deerfield now, like a, like, a, you know, a mini slideshow or something like that, but not actually trying to discuss it in Deerfield now. I think that's too awkward. Um, well, anyhow, let's, let's just keep this in mind, because I think we don't know where we're even going with it until we have. Casey. Can I ask a question? Yes, Casey, go ahead. So we finally recreated the town's Facebook page because it was created incorrectly and it wasn't a business account. So we got some help to fix that. Oh. And it's, it went live a couple days ago. Oh. So it's more appropriate to publish it through the town's Facebook page. Yes. Um, but I do think listening to the conversation, I think it makes sense to either link it the thing I was thinking about your conversation linking to Sunderland's question and answer thing. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to want to see your smiling faces because they, they can correlate to you guys as opposed to not knowing who these Sunderland people are. Right. Mm -hmm. So it might be useful for you guys to do your own Q and a. No, which, I agree. Which you could do. I know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the light Lori. Oh my God. <laughs> Um, I know I could clap at you too. Um, <laughs> the, I think it might be more useful because then they, they have an idea of who they're talking to and who's, re who's reviewing this stuff. Cause you guys have been very involved in this and we put you in front of, you know, our background at the town hall or one of you, um, or we create backgrounds for you on your zoom accounts and, <laughs> I like that. Put it that way. Can I talk over the Connecticut River that you have? <laughs> of course you can. It's a public picture. I didn't steal it. It's a it's a public picture. So my other one is my UMass. I have a UMass picture that I use as a background too. <laughs> so, but yeah. So I think that's a good idea. You guys could use similar questions, or you might have other questions that you've received from residents that Sunderland didn't address. Yeah, and. And they would be addressing, they pick different numbers. So, I mean, different uh, options. And so I think exactly. I, I was just suggesting that we do something similar to them. I, I um, yeah. but anyhow, uh, and also I think now that it's, that we dealt with the, with the basics, in other words, the whole sign up part has gone. We only have one issue to talk about, and that is encouraging people to, to uh, sign up for the higher, the higher amount, which is, easier to talk about than trying to explain the whole process. Yeah. Um, MA, um, hi, it's Steve again. I'm back, but just by audio. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Oh, okay. Um, I'm sorry, I missed, missed a lot of this, but are we talking about this, this uh, thing, a Q&A thing, um, to talk about this new um, information from, uh, from uh, Colonial? Or no. are we talking about it for the 50 percent or for both? I was talking about it to enhance the letter you wrote to encourage people to sign up for the, you know, to, to get people to sign up for the higher one. Once, once they've already are all signed up and see that Dynergy is there and, you know, they're used to the whole process, then, then you know, at some point in the fall and have, do, do something that would just encourage people to think about being um, doing something for the for the cl for climate change. Sure. Um, in in terms of this this uh, inf new information from from Colonial, um, is is this? Uh, I don't know. Have you already talked about this, or no. is, are we going to be talking about it later? Uh, you know what I'm saying. Already talk about it. Yeah. We haven't. Well, I'm sorry. We haven't okay. I don't, re reached any solutions or conclusions. Okay. I, I don't know if we. This is a good time to. For yeah. Me to yeah. Go ahead. Um, so I, if I understand this right, this is a this is a change by Eversource that's going to affect all all Eversource customers, including you know the, the Dynergy. You know they're they're supplying the you know, the part that they supply to us and the the people who get the base original project, 
product that we have now um, are all going to be affected by it. Is that right? Yes, it's, it isn't coming from Eversource. It's coming from the state. It's a, it's some, it's a program that the state is initiating, and I don't know what this right. is. Casey, do you know what the thing is? Whatever Which one? That what the state, what why they're having the price rise, what that program is that the state is funding. I was trying to figure that out myself. Um, yeah, I don't either. I don't know either. But it's something it's something that the state, either the legislature or or one of the state agencies is implementing and it affects Eversource and us. Because right. of uh, the new the new um um energy bill, I guess, right? They're gonna the, raise the um the, the RPS, the... No, the it isn't yeah, the RPS, though. It's something else. It's not? Oh. Well, the clean, they call it the clean energy standard, is that yeah, what? Yeah, which I don't know what here. it is. I've never oh. heard of it. Um, I mean, basically, it says in this, I'm looking at this email from Denise, and yeah. it says, this is an expansion of the clean energy stand, standard, which is a purchase obligation that was developed by DEP and went into effect in 2018. It requires utilities and all competitive suppliers to source an increasing amount of clean energy on top of what's required by the um, mass RPS. Oh. So it's so it's I guess it's an additional clean energy, but it, but you know. But it's from DEP, like it's, which is a strange place for it to come from. So I don't. Uh -huh, I don't know what uh -huh. it is. Okay. DEP. Oh, not DPU. Oh, DEP. Okay. Okay. The thing I think that's important is for people, I mean, obviously, when I guess people are going to get a letter about this in November or something, um, and you can imagine how people who already had mixed feelings about you exactly. know, the, the aggregation, they're going to say, oh, see, they're raising our rates already. And but so it's going to be very important to make clear that it, the rates being raised for everybody, not just for Dynergy and if, that and put it in the perspective of how little an increase it is. But also, I think that if Colonial slash Dynergy have to send out this letter, Eversource will also. Yeah, I think, I, right. I, I, I mean, so, so everybody's going to get this letter, which makes our job a little easier. That's going to be hard right. for them to complain about it when the people who opted out get the letter, too. Oh come on! And people, it'll be an, it'll people, be people. There. They'll find ways. That's people won't people. know if the other people. <laughs> they'll know well, the other people. <laughs> right. Away, right. They're very people are very good at complaining, you know. Yeah. Um, but I, but you know that anyway, we might want to do something at least on the website or the Facebook page about this at, around that time around that time before people get the letters. Yeah. I'm looking for the background on this and I'm trying to find it because I see the amendment and the, the amendment is basically to the agreement um, because of they're incorporating updates to the pricing based on the energy standard expansion. And then it's a very simple, it's a two page amendment. It's not a com complex thing, but they do put in your, standard product, your optional green product, and a bunch of gobbledygook that everybody's going to look at you guys and say, what's this? Yeah. Like I just did. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nobody reads. That's what everybody needs to understand. Nobody reads, including right. me. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's a little bit, if they get this, if they get a, a letter that references some of that stuff, they're going to question you. They're going to want Absolutely. to know what the heck it is, Absolutely. even if they see it on an electric bill from Eversource. Absolutely. Maybe we can make a, um, FAQs about aggregation and post it. Mm -hmm. um, so can you tell me, like, what is, Casey, what is the um, preference or when would we use the town website versus the, web, the Facebook page? I would never think um, that you can use it. At this point, you can use them interchangeably because what we did was we cleaned up the Facebook page so that it was connected. So if you go to the town's website and click on the Facebook thumbs up, it'll take you to our Facebook page. Huh. Um, oh, we'll okay. be working ourselves into Instagram too because we finally got I finally got a social media policy. So now I can say to people, you will not do that. <laughs> 
but um, why? It just makes everything so, I don't know, just there's like too well, much information because out there. It, well, that's the thing. A lot of people, so you've got two different groups of people here, at least, maybe three. You've got a younger crowd that tends to go to Facebook or go to Instagram, whereas folks my age, and I'll be 50 next year, we tend to go to web pages first. And it's, it's how we acclimatize to using the web as opposed to where people, and how people get their news, as opposed to how comfortable you are in different spaces. A lot of people use all three. Yeah, so I think there, there have to be a lot of duplication, basically, right? We'll, and so we'll what be... you do is you create one thing and we point different, different um, social media pages to that one thing. Yeah. My preference would be what we did with COVID, which is we created a COVID page. And every time we have changes or every time something comes up, I tell Pat and Jennifer to put it on, put a link on the COVID page so that people constantly go to one place like the state's done. Um, right. It makes it easier. So if you have information you want to push out on Facebook, all you do is you put a link out to the web page. Yeah. And it self duplicates throughout the platforms. Put the yeah, link. Very convenient. Wait, so put the link from Facebook to the town web page? Is that what, what you saying? do is you put the document up on <clears throat> on the web page, on the on the town's website, on its own page, which I think okay. we created, didn't we, Ma? We did, we did, we did. So what we do is we put this information up on that page, and then notify everybody by doing a Facebook post with a link in the in the post itself. So you just put the web address for the page; they can find that information on the website, and that what it does is it funnels the web traffic to that one page. Okay, just so put on different social media platforms. So just for kicks, um, here I, I'm on the town website. I clicked on Energy Resources Committee, which we were going to change the name, but we haven't done yet. Um, and it's set, it just it it gives it gives questions on community aggregation program and the phone number to call, but. I don't see anything else here. Didn't we? we had stuff on there. Of course, I don't remember where to look for it. And Jennifer would know because she put it up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I saw it when it was originally up there. And then um, I, I was kind of surprised it, it wasn't there anymore. Somewhere because sometimes what happens is something else comes up and it sort of supersedes everything else. So you have to go digging a bit. Right. Um, so I'm just, I'm just um, trying to think about how to make it so that people can find stuff. So oh, what did I just see? I just, I thought I just saw a Facebook app somewhere. Oh, I did. Oh, it I see it's a share. Okay, so share and, okay. So I guess I would need, a, so what, what would we would, what would we actually so just I, kind of make something and give it to you to post? I would have you send us what you guys, what you guys decide to okay. you want to put up and coordinate it with Jennifer like MA did. Okay. Which you could just assign MA to do that because she'll work with Jennifer on it. And what the, the thing that Lori's asking, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, Lori, is <laughs> you want to be clear about where all of you can find this so that, you know, if we put it up on our Facebook page and it's on the web page, if somebody asks you on Facebook, you can say, here's the link. Right. And it goes straight to that place. It, it, the reason you do that link thing is it makes it easier for people to search because what you're doing is you're looking on the web page and so am I to try to find it and we can't find it. And I know in the back of my head that I know there's been a bunch of things that have taken precedent and sort of pushed everything else back. So it may be that it's buried somewhere. Right. Yeah. What I don't like about our web page. Talk amongst um, yourself. One, one other question if we do do a frequently asked questions and response i'm assuming we'd have to run it by denise yes before we post it yes I'm we would okay well i um nominate steve uh Iper and ma to do that <laughs> <laughs> me too Oh, geez. Okay, I'm, happy. So, I'm, I'm honored. <laughs> okay, and you know, it's and its then, own page, Lauren. 
Oh, you found it? I did. It says the reason I was, I, what I did was I did a search for aggregation and it pulls um, up all the information that I know I may worked with Jennifer on. So on the search bar at the top? Yep. Type in aggregation. Okay. Okay. I think, I think this has become pretty much of a dead issue for everybody now. Yeah. They've all made their decisions or, or just op, right. op, opted in or opted out. And the reason I brought this up is, is at some point I'd like to make it a hot issue again. And I don't know when, but, but it's going to be a while. And so, uh, you know, when it becomes, when we decide we want to make it a hot issue again, we'll get it to the front of the website and give them new information and right. do some more stuff. But right. And that, and I don't know whether the, the, I think the big question is, do we want to do it? At a, at a time when they're getting this letter saying the price is going up, do we want to do it at a different time? Or, or you know, we could even do it in January or February when that, that, when that piece has all died down and people have forgotten sort of about it and we bring it up at another time or maybe I, right after a hurricane and people are concerned about uh, climate change <laughs> you know, yeah. or, or whatever. I mean, I don't know, but uh, I I agree. I mean, I think what you're hinting at, Emma, is this could backfire that we can, especially on an internet discussion, wind up fomenting discord more than yes. getting people to. Um, it's certainly possible. I think we have to be very it. careful about that. Yeah. So I I just have to say, um, this is the first time I'm looking at your original. Um, well, I have to say you should have looked sooner. <laughs> well, like I have to say, um, I mean, I read, I read what came in the mail, but I, I think that's still relevant, this frequently asked questions. And um, I wish there was a way to link from Deerfield you know, Energy Resources Committee directly to this. I wish it was well, listed Deerfield, there. Deerfield now had the link up. We, um, Trevor and I referred to the link many times on Deerfield Now. It was, it was very available at the time when it was a hot discussion. So I'm, what I'm wondering is how, yeah, I mean, I guess you're just kind of um, modifying this. Oh, on your web page. So if you go to the main homepage, there's a, on this, to the left-hand side, you'll see COVID-19 emergency services and community choice power supply program. It's the still third there. tab down. So it's so still there. That's where it's right was. there. Yeah, yeah it's right up at the top. Home. Let me click home. Okay. Oh, so, it is right there. No, so it's right. You know what it is? Is we keep thinking about it under different terms, but if you think about right. it under community choice power supply, then it's right. And the word the word aggregation isn't there at all. So I don't know. I know. If I look know. for it. Because that's what I remember is aggregation. I don't necessarily remember it the way that MA wrote the information. Well, that Just was because that, I always hear it from Denise's aggregation. That, yeah, I know. But that but the name of the program on the letter that they got, the letter doesn't refer to aggregation. So we went we went with the, term, the, letter. the letter was coming out with. Yeah. Bulk purchasing all, program or something. I, as I recall, we also did try to make it so that if you search for aggregation, it shows up because at first okay. it didn't. Yeah. Okay. But I, well, I want to go back to what, what Casey said, and that is people don't read. <laughs> so, this discussion i mean you know we i think i think that we can put this to bed for right now we yeah. need to, we need to think about timing because i would love to do a push to get people to do some more stuff but i don't want to make i don't want to make it worse yep so, so I, why don't we it's all about timing now and yeah do it that's time. what i would say i'm just putting the idea out there as something that we could be that is a project we could take on. Yeah. Okay. So that we will um, address, we will re reconsider after, I don't know, closer to when the um, price increases are announced. Well, I, well, that's part of, I, I mean, I think that we're going to have a better luck after people know what the Eversource prices are going to be for winter. 
Okay. And will will we get a um we will know. We will okay. Um can we jump back to just get rid of the minutes for now? I mean, <laughs> oh yeah. That. Approve June's minutes. Oh. <laughs> I, move, I move that we approve June's minutes. Second. I uh vote yes. Yes. So do I. Yes. All right. Oh, yeah, that's handled. Got say, that? your, uh, say your vote. Okay. Oh. What do we have to call the roll call vote? Because we're uh, all right, Lori, do you vote Let's yes? Do that. That we approve our minutes that you wrote. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Steve Swoboda, do you? Yes. The minutes? Yes. Uh, these are the June 18th, 17th or 18th minutes of this year. Uh, M.A., do you approve? I vote yes. Steve? I vote yes. David, yes, I do. Uh, it's unanimous. All right. What's next on this agenda? And I think whatever the agenda is, it's... Well yeah, I, uh, normally on our agenda, there is something about green communities. I assume it is next. It's, we know nothing. I don't know anything. Casey, have you heard anything? I mean, about, they, no, they, I haven't. In the middle of the summer, it'll be the, this, it'll be then, but nobody knows when they're going to decide. Nobody knows when they're going to decide. What's happened with a lot of the grant programs is they're taking their sweet time because they're watching the revenues the revenue stream and trying to decide when they should start stacking these grants to come out. We were told that, <clears throat> just as a correlation, we were told that the next round of MVP would be out by now, and now we're being told it's going to be at least three weeks. But they're talking so this weeks. isn't unusual. They're talking weeks, not months, you think? No, I think it's going to be a couple of weeks. I haven't heard, and I check my email about this every once in a while, just to check in. Yeah. But I think they would tell us, usually you get an email. And if we bug them hard enough, they say, oh, we'll let you know in a couple of weeks. And that's what well, I've heard for two grants, including this one. Yeah. So pushing it back. So um, Casey, while we're on the subject of grants, um, thanks for the work on the MEDA grant for, for Alyssa. Is that all done? Is that we sent it out, so we'll wait to see what they say about the Meta Grant. Um, and I thanked Alyssa because she did most of it. Yeah. Um, there were a couple things she asked me to get, but what we'll do is we'll wait and see what they say. And then if we hear back from them, I'll let you, as soon as we get any grant announcement, I'll let you know. Okay, great. But we did, I did confirm that he received it in the time frame uh, yeah, within no, I, that. I saw his thanks for get it for him. Yep. And, and that, that grant um, will give us money to hire Alyssa. Is that right? It'll give us money to hire somebody to evaluate the um, solar install down at the old Deerfield Wastewater Treatment Plant and figure out what's not working. Oh, oh wow. That's, that's what it's for. That's Excellent. what it's for. <laughs> yep. That's what it's for. And okay, so um, that's different than just getting her assistance on other reporting for green communities. Other reporting for green communities, we had DLTA funds that we had used for that before. And okay. she hasn't advised me where we're going to need to be with that. I have a, a couple thousand that I could use in my contracted services. But when I asked her about this before, she said that it, they had had it through DLTA funds, which are the local te technical assistance funds. Okay. And so that's better, where I think we are. You better say what META grants are. I, is it Massachusetts Environmental Technical Assistance? Or yeah, I think that's what it is. Or something. It's technical assistance. It's technical anyway. assistance. <laughs> okay. Um, news. Any, any news about the solar, um, the new... Um, Landfill solar. Okay. Yes, we have news about that too. Oh, oh good. I'm glad I'm on this oh. call. Yes, I'm glad you are too. <laughs> so the next amp project is still in pro contract negotiations. There were a couple of things that I told the board this last night. There were a couple of things that I know. Just wait. There's a reason. There is a reason we have Beth Greenblatt. That's all I have to say. Um, 
Beth ran into a problem in a negotiation and a contract with another town that she brought to my attention and Ben Axelman's attention. He's the guy that is the next AMP rep that's negotiating. He's my counterpart. Um, and she asked us to consider adding language about how we would handle, what did she call it? She sent me the information, how we would handle removal or te a temporary removal of the system if there was a problem on the land. So if there was a problem that was the owner's issue, what would we do about that? Because I guess she ran into that situation with another client. And so mm -hmm. she asked us to discuss that. And then there was another um, contract issue that she wanted Ben and I to see each other face to face about. So we found language that we think will work to deal with that temporary removal issue. Um, because you have to identify the situation and you also have to identify the costs associated. So to so, protect the town and to protect Nexamp, we should address it. Was yeah, her that's instance, a good thing. If our landfill started the leaking side. something and we had to... Exactly. Yeah. Okay. She doesn't think it's an issue because our landfill cap is so old. Mm -hmm. um, it would be, she would think it would be more of an issue if we had a younger cap. You know, so if we things, didn't have to. So things yeah, have it's, settled. It's, we that's can what she thinks. Okay. Uh, we yeah. have the erosion issues that are addressed in other areas of the contract, but because she ran into it with another town, she thought it was a cautionary tale, so asked both sides to consider it. And we both think it's a good idea just because it's another one of those things that if somebody's gone through it and it could happen to us, let's just have the language there. Um, so what's going to happen is, is she has the language. She sent it out to me and to Lisa. And we're going to, I think we're going to meet on Tuesday to discuss that because the board last night, when I told them we needed to deal with a couple of changes in the contract, the board said to me, and Beth and I had planned on having this ready for the ninth, but the board said to me they actually wanted a little bit earlier than that because they want to be able to have an executive session with council to discuss it. Uh huh. So, uh -huh. and there are some concerns that I, so we're on a public meeting call. There are things that I can't tell you because they're yeah. negotiation issues. Mm -hmm. um, it, just because I need to protect the, the yeah. town's position in the negotiation, mm -hmm. yeah. but all of these things that we've progressively discussed that I now looped into since I've had my education from Beth, um, all of these things that we're that we've worked through is to protect the town and and obtain this. I don't know if it's a four-year project, MA. I don't know how long this has been going on, but even though the length of this time frame has been long, they've been trying to alleviate some of the problems, not only with the site, but with the contractual, the, inter the interconnection, the study, all of these things that we've had to progressively deal with. We're, we think we're in the home stretch. So if we can get the, the couple of paragraphs changed and have Ben review them, and be able to sell them, we probably could get this done mid-September if I can get him to get the information. If we can get that language settled next, before the, by the middle of next week. Um, can I, mean, can I just ask yeah. for clarification, who's Ben? Ben Axelman is Nexamp's representative. He's okay. my counterpart. Yeah. So, so that by signing the contract and having which they're already proceeding with the Eversource, the whole process of getting Eversource to do the analysis. Then, the then, then, yeah, then we can get in line for the SMART program. Exactly. Then, until we've done that, and I think we have to have the DEP stuff done too. So once we have right. those, those th three things done, then we can get in line with the SMART program. I have no idea where the SMART program is right now, whether people are getting in line or not. They are, but there are places that are having the same issue we are. Yeah. So what Beth has told me is she's, she's sort of identified the tranche that we would fall into. Um, and right now, I think she said it was tranche nine or tranche 10. And yeah. it depends on how fast the study gets done so they can evaluate what the interconnect is gonna be. Right. 
and I by no means understand this MA. <laughs> but but that's this is um, a heavy lift for me. This is like learning broadband right off it the bat. Is, it totally is. It's it's so it's totally I mean I don't know, aggregation, all these things are, you know, yeah. you're dealing with the state and, and with contracts and with big time people and it gets very complicated and um, But isn't isn't um doesn't doesn't next stamp itself handle that or do we have to does our town well, have they, to handle they it? handle it, but if if the smart program it has its limits as to and then it runs out and that's what happened to us last time is we didn't get in line in time and so mm -hmm. And so, so uh, because That's we didn't have thing. a contract, so now, so that was my concern is, is that- It's our be able to get there. Beth thinks we will be, but that's one of the reasons that she was pushing Ben. Good. Um, so the, the contract, contract language that we're discussing isn't substantially complicated. Um, there were a couple of other changes that we need to get- but even that, still, we have to be. wait for Eversource to get their act together. And they're under some right. kind of timeline obligation if they pay attention. Sometimes they don't. And I don't know what that timeline obligation is. I haven't asked that. But they applied in March, I think. So okay. we're coming up on a time when maybe the Eversource is going to start providing some information. Okay. <laughs> Let me just so yeah, just we clarify. intend to try to get this done by the 9th if we can. Um, <clears throat> I don't know, I don't know what time on Tuesday I'll be meeting with them. I haven't heard back. Um, and again, I have to be very careful what I say in a public meeting yeah. because we have to maintain that confidentiality yeah. as long as we're negotiating. I'm, I'm much more concerned about getting in line for the SMART program than, than the details of the contract. I, yeah, I agree with you guys on that. A little gambling is warranted because we <clears throat> stand to lose a lot either way. If we, yeah. I mean, so, we may stand to lose more from delay than the potential cost of removing photovoltaics to do work on the land. And the other, the other. I want to. I want to just back up. I saw Steve trying to get in too. Steve Viper, do you want to say something? Well, I know. I just wanted to backtrack a little bit because I'm. I'm still a little unclear. I think you mentioned this, Ma. But so once we get this contract issue settled and the contract is agreed on by both sides, what is the next step? What What happens? between then and getting in line for the SMART program? Is that, is that there, there are three resources? Things, there are three things that have to be done. As I, as I understand it, NextAMP has done the other two things. Now they haven't, they're not complete, but they filed with Eversource and they filed with DEP. And I don't, and, I, and they may have, and there may be some town boards that they have to talk to also. I don't know, Casey, but those- There's things, permanent. Yeah, so those permits, all those things have to be taken care of before we go to the SMART program. All, all, all of the, those things. The big ones are ever, the biggest one is Eversource. DEP has basically said, you guys are good, you know, but that, but it's a process. And, and, and NextAMP does all that work, but we can't do anything until we have a contract and we have all the permits and we have ever, and we know what ever sources numbers are going to be. So we can't. When you say we can't, um, is that the town? Is that Casey no. applies for the smart program? No, it's next stamp. Next, they'll yeah. do it. They'll they'll do it, but but they, they can't do it. Until working, they're working through us and with us to get it done. So I mean, like if if they have to go to if they have to go to the conservation commission, you know that that needs to be coordinated with us and you know whatever but it's 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 pretty it, all those steps need to be done and there's no reason that they won't that there's a problem with any of them except for eversource and you don't know what eversource is going to say that's where the and whole the, part, so the, that's where it could all so fall the, through so the, the permitting piece of it is we don't anticipate problems with that we're not in the town. No. The town's not going to have any problems with permitting it. No. Yeah. I doubt yeah. it. I doubt they'll have a problem with it. We haven't done, okay. we haven't gone through the process because until we go through, until we finalize the contract, Nexiamp isn't going to put the money into it. 
to mm -hmm. obtain the permits until we finalize that contract. And the board's as anxious to get it done as you guys are. Yeah. So oh, I know. the question of it's taken a while to sort of parse through all of the details. This is a pretty complex contract. And so we need to make sure that we cover as many bases as we can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. From what I've heard in these discussions with council and with Beth Greenblatt. Yeah. No, I think I think that's all. That's all true. I, the, the the big if the big problem is is ever if EverSource throws some kind of monkey wrench in that says that we have to pay or not we but Nexamp has to pay some phenomenal amount of money to hook it up, then they could they could they can back out and we're back at square zero. Yeah, that didn't Montague have something like that or the Wendell. Wendell, it was like three million dollars to hook up. Yeah, really, and that's the outlier that we we just don't know the answer to. So you all are both. It's important to stay cautious about that, yeah. um, because that would not be a any, fatal flaw that would program. There's not any um, protocol that EverSource is required to follow. Yes, I mean. They, 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 but, but they get to come up with the numbers. They have That's to, they have to do it by the book, but they get to come up with the numbers. And so the study is where they get their number. They go through the study of this evaluative process that Nexamp has started, but ultimately Eversource gets to come up with the number, which means they're, they're the ones that are, ha that have the power card. You know, they've got, they've got the ace in the hole there. Mm -hmm. And, and that's all a FERC thing? Is that, or is it? No, DPU? that's actually DPU. Those are all DPU regulations, I think. Am I right, Emma? Yeah. Yeah, that has to change. But <laughs> anyway, um, can I ask a little aside here? On Is it Christian Lane? There's two um, installations of Waitley Community Solar. Do you know about that? Maybe we should talk about that offline. I don't know. Yeah, that's not on our agenda. Yeah. Okay. I'm. I want to want to get up to date on that. Um, so I'm assuming that anything with the solarize or energize. Uh, um, yeah. Um, I will tell you that. Remember the old Frontier Solar Three project that we voted at town meeting in June. We finalized that. Now this is a private solar project that had yeah. been in the. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we finalized that contract. Um, you'll start to see work on that, although it's offset right road. I don't know exactly when they'll start, but I did want to let you know that that's also yeah. out there. And Nexamp actually bought them. Oh, really? Because the communication I got was from somebody from Nexamp. <laughs> <laughs> wow. The irony is not lost on me on that one. <laughs> huh. Um, so charging stations, is that on the agenda? Yes, well, I think it is. Green communities, but yeah, it was well. Well, what communities. I was um, surprised about is on a MVP meeting, I heard from um, Kevin that there are two stations planned at um, the Leary lot. Do you know anything more about that, Casey? He might have. I thought we had one, but he might have allowed space for a second one. And uh, do you know if anything more has happened, or if the um, a uh, grant application was e even submitted with um, Eversource for the, what do they call it, Make Ready program? Has that been? I don't know. I That's a, actually a question for Kevin because I don't know that part. Okay, I focused on the green communities piece of it. And I think he was more dialed into the other piece of that. So I'm sorry, I don't know. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll check in with Kevin. Um, it seemed like he was moving straight ahead with that as far as um, when they were talking about um, permeable pa uh, porous pavement or whatever we want to call it there um, and the whole layout of the, Le the Leary lot he was talking as if it was definitely part of the plan. Yes that's what he's done he's sort of included it in his own brain as part of the plan plan because he knows that what you guys want it to be in there he doesn't necessarily disagree it's just how do you fit all of those things into the Leary lot design? Um, well, I, I know he-, he And I don't know what the connect is between Eversource, that make ready piece of it, 
and everything else because honestly i haven't had a chance to get up to speed on that one yeah he, except to the correlation with green communities okay i know that he did have um you know one of their representatives come out and look at um how hard it would you know what the infrastructure w would be needed and i think somebody even made a um a diagram of the lot and all that kind of stuff so um i what i don't know and i guess i can ask him is if we were um given the funding and if there is a timeline with that but yeah part of this has to do with green communities if we've got a funding issue if we're waiting on funding from green communities yeah. right. you don't want to start the project until you've signed a contract because they won't pay for it right, right. exactly the state is yeah. very strict about these things yeah yeah so i'm not sure what stage things are at with kevin um can you check that out Lori? yep i will thanks um that was part of uh that is on the agenda that was actually the next item um, oh. <laughs> sorry no, david um for david no but we've also got uh street lights on the agenda any new oh. anything on that from anybody oh it's all, I haven't it's all related to green communities yeah. it's all related to the grant yeah. Yeah. yeah all that although do you know i don't know if it would be uma or maybe laura um a uh, lori the um Paul Vassell, he's the gentleman that Trevor had talked to about streetlights. Oh, right, right, right. Um, I don't know. I haven't really talked to him because I was waiting to hear about the grant because we right. can't do much until we hear about the grant. Right. right. So I had sort of pushed him off and said I would get back in touch with him once I know. I didn't know where you were in terms of, of going through the procurement process because it's different with street, with energy project than it projects than it is for other things and so i didn't know what your where your guys's head was in terms of pursuing the the changes right. to the le where, where 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 my head is personally is that uh i i talked to Alyssa about what other towns have done just in relation to because i i assume we have to do some sort of rfp we, we have to do something yeah, well, unless we use a state contract. If we use a state contract, often we can get away with not having. So well, whatever the case, I think we ought to go out. We ought to get information from a couple of three different companies, just because okay. that's smart. Well, and was that somebody talking to us? <laughs> Hello, <Hi>, Lori. <laughs> no, it's not my oh. friend here. But. Um, so, so, so uh, it sounded like some sort of monster walking. Up. <laughs> no, that was that was my friend walking up the stairs here. Ah. <laughs> no, nothing serious. Oh, good. It's usually pretty under control. Glad to hear your bell there. Um, yeah, right. So, so anyhow, I just I just think it's wise to get some names, and so I talked to Alyssa, and she was going to do that. I don't know whether she did or not, or she what. Probably waiting on the grant she hasn't asked me about it so we're still it's sort of a holding yeah. pattern until we hear about oh, the grant that's what that's i i hadn't i wasn't too worried about it but i don't think we ought to just automatically give it to the guy you know whatever the company is that trevor just has one kind of thing it's just bad policy but that's the only thing i i um got an email also from somebody i had talked to originally about charging stations but you know i'm not responding yet um what was the total cost on the charging station? Do you remember, Lori? <laughs> I don't. I don't remember. Um, oh, well, uh, it's around 7,000, I think. Okay. So one. that threshold is a little bit easier to deal with. Um, we could get, we could go out and get quotes, but because of the amount of money, we don't have to. We can use good business practices unless 25A says I can't, but as far as I know, in 25A, that's the that's the statute that co covers um, energy projects. As far mm -hmm. as I know, 25A allows us to use that threshold of up to ten thousand dollars before that's we have what to. I remember. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think we can still use that threshold. Yeah. So um, the uh, maintenance person at Deerfield Academy had told me who he dealt with at Charge Point. Um, so if we can just go directly through them, yeah. 
I don't have a problem with that. I do think it makes sense to do at least a price quote for or use a state contract because yeah it's, it's on the state contract that's where state i got contract. the numbers from we may not actually this is the thing ma with a state contract the state's already done all the vetting right, right. so you can pick the vendor that's allowable on that state contract usually you have more than one choice right often out here you would pick you would pick one that's closer to our area so that if you have problems, you can get in touch with that person. And, but, also, and also go out to some of the other towns that have used them and make sure that. Right. Yeah. You can yeah. always ask for references. Yeah. But sometimes a state contract is more, exp it, it just expedites the process. I, I just, we got burned on the wastewater treatment plant with that. I know. Process. And so I just think do, having a, um, but, you know, just being a little bit more careful about how we do business than we did last time on that. You're talking of what is it, 160 some odd thousand? Is that what we were talking about for the entire grant? Yep. I remember. I see, yeah. It was in that ballpark. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, you're talking over a hundred thousand dollar project. So I, what I would do is I'll just go back and look at 25A and see what it tells us we have to do. If there is a contract out there, I can ask you guys if you want to do this or if there's more than one vendor on that contract, then we can question those vendors, but reference it in a, in a you know. Right. References from, from towns that have used these companies are huge. That's one thing that they tell us, whether it's horizontal construction or vertical construction. References for projects over $100,000 are really important so that you don't get stuck like we did with the wastewater treatment yeah. plant. Yeah. And, we, and we did references and they were beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> yep. huh. All right, so I'll check 25A. Okay. So we're, we're really on hold with aggregation and with green, green communities. Um, and I guess the same with anything with Energized Deerfield. I, I just think that try, try, as hard as it is to communicate right now and answer questions, and I mean, we just talked about just trying to do the aggregation you know, yeah. trying to get education there. The education for Solarize is, would kill us during COVID, I think. It's yeah. just impossible. Um, I mean, you don't want to invite the town to one big Zoom meeting? <laughs> <laughs> we can do it. We can do a couple hundred. I don't think we can do 5,000. <laughs> Although they can get up to 10,000 people in a meeting. But, but yeah. guess, what? guess how many people would show up? Yeah. yeah you me and one other person <laughs> <laughs> maybe 10. i don't know the zba hearing we had like 79 people at one point so yeah, well, that's, uh, that's yeah. pretty hot yeah. that was a hot topic aggregation that was is a hot topic colorize is not that hot nope <laughs> um do do we have any other things we need to discuss like new business or oh that that was the other question i had and this is new business um and it doesn't involve, but should we try and get in conversation with the zoning board about changing solar regs, Casey, or, I mean, not, well, the, the I think it depends on where you are with it. Hmm? Where are you with it and what's your timeline to make the decision? Well, I, I don't know. We, it, this is the first word we've mentioned about it, but I know a lot of towns are, are changing their solar regs uh, to, because they're so old and they don't really apply anymore. And I know FERCOG has examples of stuff and I, so the, we don't, we're nowhere on it to tell you the truth, but I'm just bringing it up as something that we might, that maybe we want to do something about, but I don't know whether, since it's not on the agenda, whether we can talk about it here. It can be a comment from all of you. The question can be, investigatively where would you go with that so if it were me um having had the conversation i had earlier today which is there's a lot of outdated stuff in those bylaws that need to be fixed absolutely um, i don't know if you focus at, i think you're right the pv has to be changed because it probably is old yes um there are other issues in the bylaws that need to be fixed Honestly, I would love to see something holistic happen, but I don't know what that looks like. 
I honestly, I haven't had a chance to just dig into it because it's, it's, it seems overwhelming and it comes up every time we start to review applications for ZBA is we see issues in those bylaws. So it's, it's something that now we're very aware of, but we know that the planning board is working on four different things, right? At, at this point, there's an intersect with the select board on the marijuana. So there's going to be changes. If your idea was to maybe make this happen by the next annual, that's probably a good timeline to use. Would that's, be my that's what I, I, there's no urgency on this as far as I'm concerned. I, that's what, but I thought now's the time to bring it up if we're talking about next, assuming April. How about we make that an action item for our next meeting and yeah. our next meeting date. Yeah. So should um, we, um, do some can we do some homework offline like emma can you share i can, um, I can check with card? Sir card. i don't know okay. who's doing that these days if you shoot an email over to Alyssa or peggy they'll tell you who's handling it Alyssa yeah. would probably be able to point you in the right direction okay um, Pe peggy used to but i don't know whether okay, i don't know then, if, see oh, i was just gonna say something yeah someone can summarize um like what the the issues have been because uh, you know i'm not really clear on so maybe and and a uh, future meeting someone can summarize the problems that yes. have occurred. Yeah. that'll that'll be all part of what you know we're, the, we're gonna have to review them and see which ones we need to, i mean it, it's it's some work yeah a couple of people have mentioned to me that there was a there's a limit of private solar yes yep. things like that need looking at so people want to see those limits lifted and the person to actually talk to about this is probably peggy because she's dealt with it i think in more than one town so what you might want to do is I all of you review the bylaws and if you do if you go into the code online mm -hmm. um and just put in photovoltaic it'll pull every reference up in the search bar so you could start looking at that and then okay. Peggy can do the same thing. But right. what I would suggest is you guys do your homework on that and then come back and decide how you want to approach Peggy so that we can best use, her, use the resources of her time because I don't know how much her time costs right now. Now that Pat's been, Pat Smith's been gone for two years, but they never really filled Pat's position. Ah. So Peggy's position has sort of changed in the structure of the planning office. Okay. okay. Uh, next meeting. Well, what's the way it would be sometime in September, right? Sometime in September. I'm going to be busy at the end of September for sure. Um, are we going to have, if, are we going to know anything? Um, nah. I guess we should, uh, maybe we should we have should a date anyway, anyway. But I mean, what is it, which David, when, when, how, how late can you do it in September? <laughs> Um, I could, the week of the 21st, any day on that week, I could do. Should we try and stick with Thursday? Yeah, um, let's stick with the uh, 24th would be good for me. It's fine for me. I'm sure it's fine for me. I don't do things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, now. Okay, so 4 p.m. via Zoom and... and you know how to set that up, right? Casey does. Can somebody send me an email so I can have Jennifer set it up? Sure. Okay. Uh, David will do that. <laughs> what about what about time? What time? Do you, four, teaching again? getting in people. Case uh, Lori is Kate is teaching going to get in your way? Um, yeah. I I don't think on a Thursday with virtual. No. Okay. I don't so, have to get back here. Uh, that's right. <laughs> Four o'clock. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Okay. Yeah, it's all great right. to have you um, pop in, Casey, so you can share all yeah, that. that was very yeah, helpful. thanks so much. It wasn't so intentional, helpful. but I'm glad I was here. So, yeah, I am too. So, I had to, <laughs> this is not my wheelhouse. I'm learning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I'm glad I could answer some questions, even if they aren't the answers you want. Once oh, I have more information on NextAmp, I will probably shoot David an email. Perfect. I don't, somebody send me the entire group email because I still don't have it. And Jennifer might actually have it. I haven't asked her. 
um, because I haven't really thought about it because I wasn't at a place to tell you guys anything. <laughs> I, I think. But we're closer than we were. So that's the good news. That is good. All right. I, I can do that. Okay. It, today's meeting was everybody was on the okay. address. Because I see, I see the list of names yeah. and Jennifer and I look when we set these groups up and we're trying to do these meetings, she, when we do the invite, she's got to send them out to the entire group. So yeah. she may have it all set aside somewhere in her brain that I may not have I'll, I'll because send I don't always set the meetings up. Yeah. All right. Uh, Anybody? I'm going to send out my minutes just so people can look at them while it's fresh in their minds. Excellent, because I, I lose them every time. I just time. realized I had another question. Sorry about this. Oh, book. yes. Uh, I, and this is just a question. Um, when, I, when I was talking to the people uh, about aggregation at UMass, one of the things they brought up, which I think I mentioned, was that the, um, they, they asked me if we were doing anything about the uh, Mill Village Road uh, um, marijuana people, because their the the growth of marijuana is a huge polluter. Yeah, and and so both well, they're huge energy users, and so that the reason they asked originally was, are they going on to the aggregation piece? And I said, no, I think they're using propane, but. But then, but then they, and so then she, she said, yeah, but the amount of uh, pesticides and herbicides that they use to grow is phenomenal. And I'm sitting there saying, well, they're right on the Deerfield River. Is, any, is anybody checking into that? And that, so that was just a question I had, whether there was anybody paying attention to uh, environmental regs and stuff like that. So some of that was incorporated into the cannabis control regulations but I don't know. Um, Maybe we should set up a, some sort of a tour so we can- They check. aren't there yet. That's the problem. They're, they're still working through some of the other issues. So I don't know that they're ready. And they may not, I heard they may not even be growing. They may be producing. Is that, I mean, isn't that all? Well, I, what they wanted to do was they wanted to have a growth, uh, a cultivation area and a product it's called manufacturing in the regs, but it's really a commercial kitchen. That's what it is. Yeah. And so they, that's they, what they they people don't seem to be getting that through their heads. But so, so one of the issues or one of the reasons you do that is it decreases your energy costs and increases the ability for you to process more quickly and more efficiently. And the, the energy use piece of it, I don't know if they had anything in their plan because I haven't seen it. All I've seen is the host community agreement. I don't know what it looked like from a site review perspective, whether they had any energy um, elements that would lessen impacts. I also don't know whether in the process of growing they have, and this is my ignorance, not anything else. I don't know in the process of growing if they have um, checks and balances in place to limit the impact because I don't know that they have off that they have affluent issues like I don't know where that goes that it would seem to me that in a self-contained system because the growth has to happen inside a building so in a self-contained system you wouldn't necessarily have an affluent problem if that if you don't have things going back into the soil because it's all in a growth the, the system itself is a contained growth system so this isn't like hemp no, I know that. No, I know that. But, but that's but, what I don't know. Yeah. That's so that actually, I, I don't know anything either. I know nothing, but they suggested that it might be something that the town be aware of. Well, so, suggest back to them that there are a lot of these going on and it would be nice to have, you know, UMass <laughs> come up with some send kind us of information. Well, the, prob the problem is this is the economics department. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but MA, MA, don't they have to use a lot of electricity? Because I know they have a lot of lighting going on. It's not just heat. No, it's so, both. Yeah, it's they'll both. use a lot of electricity too. I don't so, know if they signed up for aggregation. Do I they, think they have some sort of a check and balance in there for that because they don't want to pay those costs. 
it behooves mm -hmm. them to find ways to decrease their costs. So aggregation is a great way to do it. They may not know right now though. Yeah, they may, they may I have no idea. I mean, they don't, I, it doesn't seem like they even know what they're doing, but. Uh, also, they, they don't want to do. On that topic though, um, can we open up our aggregation to any businesses in town or is oh, it yeah. just? Yeah, so how, it, it was. That's why we were waiting to see what the brouhaha was going to be. Oh, so, you know, like Deerfield Plastics, do they still exist or um, what at Pelican? I mean, are they part of it? Oh, so that would bump up our, um, you know, demand quite a bit. I didn't realize that. They may also, MA, they may also have access to other solar, solar energy resources that we don't know about. Right. Mm. And they, they don't have to pick us as an aggregator. They can, a lot of they businesses pick, somebody else. Other, pick other aggregators. Yeah. Because oh. they have a big buying power. Yeah. So, I mean, it's all, I, I don't know any of these, the answers oh, yeah. to this. And they just, I just thought it's probably good if the town has some questions. I mean, you know, that we maybe do some, look, look into some of it as it goes along. Mm -hmm. Can you send me the question about the environmental impacts? Because I don't even know where to look for that. I would need yeah. to get help from somebody. Okay. That way I won't forget, MA. Yeah, I, I asked, I asked them to send me a, a report and they, they did send that to me and I'll pass that on to you, but it didn't okay. have much, it didn't have much in it. So it, um, maybe talking to some other towns or I don't know, I, I don't know who, I mean, I'll send you the thing, but this is the economics department. So it's, right. it's not, they're not, they're not necessarily they're dealing not. with the environmental impacts or the energy impacts. It, so it, it makes sense for me to have something to open the conversation with my peers. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I'll, I'll send you what I have. It, it was a little disappointing when they sent it to me. I was thinking they were, they <laughs> act with, it's, a, it's an undergraduate paper. So, I mean, you know, it's, it is what it is. You have to get more in depth when you get your master's degree, right? <laughs> I'm being completely facetious because I don't have time to get my master's degree. <laughs> okay, I'll shut up now. Thank you. All right, that's it. All right. How are you Amen. Done? Yeah. I, I roll call. Bye, everybody. Roll. Thank you. I okay. I, Bye. Bye. I okay. second. Thanks, guys. <laughs> yeah, so long. Bye. People like to talk. Yeah. People like to talk.